welcome to this special episode of Frequency Matters, the RF and Microwave Update series. I'm Pat Hindle. I'm here with my co-host, Gary LaRude. Plus, we have special guests with us, Tom Cole, Vice President of Sales and Marketing at Integra Technologies, and also Mont Taylor, Vice President of Business Development at Teledyne E2V. Welcome, guys. Thanks, Pat. Thanks, Gary. Great to be here. Thank you. So Integra recently announced the availability of the industry's first 100-volt GAN transistors, and they're delivering 3.6 kilowatts with 70% efficiency for next-generation avionics systems. And the next day, Teledyne E2V announced that they would be offering high-reliability qualified versions of these devices. So we wanted to get you guys together and try to dig in a little bit more about this really interesting development in the industry. So let's start off with uh, what trends did you see in the market that led you to develop this technology? So for Integra, I think in our discussions that we, we speak with many different radar system designers and everybody has one common theme. They're under pressure to deliver enhanced system capabilities, better resolution. And when you start to drill down all of that, it really leads you to being able to increase the, the power amplifier levels. Uh, the other, other common problem that we see is this drive towards solid state replacement. Uh, as tubes age and as the technologies become more limited to find supply base wise, it's another challenge that the radar system folks face on a daily basis. So we really developed this 100 volt RF GAN on SICK to address that need and to provide a path to, to practical solid state uh, traveling wave tube replacement and much larger power transistors, which uh, simplify system architectures. So what led you to, to form a partnership? Obviously both companies are well known in the industry, but uh, you wouldn't necessarily think of connecting to each other. We, um, on the Integra side, one of the things that, that we have, have really never focused on is the high realm space market. So when we looked at the technology and really the, the Department of Defense and our partner in, in developing this technology's desire to make it available to all aspects of DOD, one of the areas we asked ourselves was, how can we leverage and go towards a market like high rel space and who is the best person to partner with from a, a company standpoint that has the history and the expertise specifically in high rel and that, that led us very quickly to the, the folks at Teledyne. And we're very excited to be able to form this partnership and really extend it to take advantage of the 100 volt process and allow that to go into solving problems for the high rail market as well. Yeah, we work with several different uh, partners that uh, don't necessarily focus on the aerospace defense market. That's all we do. So it works out very well to be able to provide the latest technologies um, to uh, the high rail market with the type of qualification and screening that they require. Sounds like a great combination. We're very excited and uh, very thankful to be working with Teledyne and we look forward to hear what we can do and really take this technology out for a drive into the, uh, the high rail market. So on the Integra side, what were the key device developments that enabled you to produce a 100 volt GAN device? Because that's only people are only doing 50 volt, maybe pushing it to 65 in some cases. That's right, Pat. The, the more commonplace 50 and 65 volt processes, what differentiates what Integra has done for 100 volts is we've actually designed the semiconductor intrinsically to operate at 100 volts. And what does that mean? We've actually scaled the epi and specifically designed aspects of the epitaxy for the higher voltage. We've also done a lot of work at optimizing field plate structures, drift region spacing, all of the things you have to do correctly to manufacture a device that not only can produce the power at 100 volts, but also do it reliably. So getting more power out of a device is, uh, from a performance standpoint, only part of the problem. The other part is, what do you do with all the heat that gets generated? So. Talk a little bit about the device design and the packaging design to handle that thermal mass, if you will. And then maybe from Teledyne's perspective, how does the high rail market influence that design? 
The only thing faster that we see in practice than a signal propagating through our, uh, our GAN is the question about that you just asked Gary about the heat. And you are exactly right. The, the challenge has always been um, to go higher power in the same physical transistor package space, you need higher power density. With higher power density does come the challenge of managing the heat. And I'm really happy and, and excited to say this is where Integra's intellectual property and our patents on thermally enhanced GAN. Uh, we have some very interesting technology that we've developed over the last five years in our technical teams here at Integra. It allows us to manage that heat differently. We can actually extract heat in parallel off the top side of the chip. And so when you marry that IP, to the 100 volt GAN, it is the perfect blend of a technology that allows us to push to higher output powers, but maintain reliable channel temperatures in the process. And the case study, just to throw a number and some data, which is always uh, much better than any words I could speak. We had a, a test case that we did at 16 watts per millimeter. So that's twice the power density that 50 volt GAN runs at. And we were able at 85 degrees C case temperature uh, to maintain 169 degrees C channel temperature. And as a recovering reliability engineer, anything below 225, I'm very happy. So with below 170, I was ecstatic. Wow. Yeah, that's very impressive. So let's turn to the Teledyne E2V side. Uh, what type of high rel qualifications and screening will Teledyne be providing in the partnership? Well, for this particular device, uh, we were looking at uh, doing sim similar to what we do with several of our other uh, enhanced type products, um, including uh, additional uh, highly accelerated stress testing, uh, additional temp cycle, burn in, radiation testing if it's required by our customers. Uh, we're looking uh, right now at uh, some of the requirements and trying to understand uh, what uh, level of uh, additional screening is needed. It's a very good, reliable part, but there's always requirements for additional documentation and things like that. So uh, at that point, we're, we're maybe doing some additional life tests, um, evaluating it uh, for, like I said, for radiation for space and other applications. And you guys work to certain mill standards and also are a trusted found? That's correct. We have facilities that are uh, mill PRF 38534 and Mill PRF 3535, uh, both in our Milpitas facility and then Moosburg, Tennessee facility. And then we also are DMEA trusted as well. So we can support uh, uh, some more classified type requirements if necessary. Well, I believe the first product that uh, you announced was one for avionics, but talk more broadly about uh, what are the types of markets and applications for this technology, uh, both uh, normal defense as well as high rel. Mm -hmm. So from the Integra side, we see a, a lot of other uh, opportunities to expand beyond just radar or avionics. There are, are a whole suite of ISM type of applications, particularly medical ablation, that have been begging for a higher power transistor to be able to reduce system size for cancer treatments and other type of medical ablation. So we see those as being uh, kind of uh, a new entrant in a new area that we can uh, pursue. Traveling wave tube replacement, uh, all sorts of ground-based ship-based radars that could utilize a much higher power transistor to go to solid state and get away from tubes and some of the reliability uh, limits that they have with that base uh, of, a, of a legacy architecture. So we see uh, this really opening the field and the aperture even all the way into some of the very wide band jamming aspects, as well as doing uh, directed energy type of systems. All of these things have a common denominator of being able to really utilize a much higher power or broader band device and happy to say the 100 volt meets both levels and we're excited about that. And from the Teledyne perspective, it's all those similar type of uh, applications that may be airborne or need some additional um, harsh environment uh, requirements that uh, we can help screen to. Well, thank you, Tom and Mont, for joining us today to discuss the introduction of this 100 volt GAN technology first in the market. The technology clearly will enable some improved performance as well as new applications for solid state technology.
and we'll be watching for the new products as you introduce them and uh, some of the insertions that you are able to talk about. And thanks everyone for joining us today and watch for our next episode of Frequency Matters.